Uh, it's also been very significant uh, and this year uh, for us uh, because we have uh, finished five years. So since we started in uh, 2017, so I completed the teacher's training in 2016, December and uh, started with Yogi Rave in 2017. So this is the completion of five years. So we have finished five years and uh, it's been, uh, it doesn't feel like as if it's been five years. So I was just thinking about it last few days that uh, how five years have flown by. And uh, first of all, I want to express my gratitude to all of you who have made this happen because uh, and this is not about me uh, if it was uh, not for people who are interested in learning then uh, i wouldn't be teaching anyone so in the last five years we have uh, been privileged to touch many people's lives and offer whatever tools we can to reach different segments of people so i just uh, recall how we started for me uh, when I uh, did the training, I was very hesitant to do the training because for me, I, I always, uh, to tell you the truth, I always felt that, um, you know, uh, being, uh, being a Hatha Yoga teacher was uh, never in my mind, actually. It wasn't something which I wanted to do. I always uh, actually feared doing Hatha Yoga because it was so precise. The kind of precision uh, which is involved, I remember that I had volunteered for an Hatha Yoga program uh, somewhere, um, somewhere in 2012. And during the Hatha Yoga program, I saw the teacher, how she was giving instructions, where it was about, you know, each finger they were noticing whether it is, <laughs> whether it is straight, whether they are joining together, whether they are touching each other, whether toes are touching <laughs> or they are slightly apart. And it kind of bewildered me that how, uh, you know, so much attention was being paid to each and every posture and the way the teacher was delivering everything. So it kind of, uh, you know, <laughs> I just felt that this was something which was beyond me. So <laughs> I remember that uh, during one of the breaks when I was volunteering for this program, I uh, spoke to the teacher and I said, I wonder how you're teaching <laughs> all this Hatha Yoga, you know. <laughs> This is definitely, <laughs> this is definitely uh, something which I cannot do. And this is the last thing in my life I would do, you know, to become a Hatha Yoga teacher. Then she told me, you know, ah, you just said this. You don't know what happens in Isha. Whatever you don't want to do, that is what you have to do. <laughs> I said, no way. <laughs> I don't think that will happen. Me uh, doing something like this which involves so much precision, so much exactness. I was just used to doing things just like that. And uh, this was like about doing things with so much precision, exactness, and uh, being careful of every word which you utter. So I just said, no way it's happening. She said, we just dug your own grave. <laughs> now you have to just wait and see. And it was right, actually. <laughs> because almost uh, four years later, it happened uh, that whether I liked it or I didn't like it, it just happened that, uh, you know, I had, I took up the teacher's training and uh, though I was not very enthusiastic about it, that uh, to take up something like this and to offer this, I um, always felt that uh, this was not something which I could do because uh, I always felt that uh, being a volunteer and just offering, uh, you know, inner engineering or being a inner engineering teacher that's uh, what I was trained for actually. So I just thought that that was the highest and I didn't really want to do this. But then when I was in Bangalore and I thought that instead of working for a firm or doing something outside where it was just uh, about making a living, it is much better to do something which I really cared for. And that is when I uh, thought about doing the Hatha Yoga teachers training. So I was, a, I was someone who was very reluctant in getting into it. And one of the reasons for my reluctance was because uh, I was uh, very, very uh, shy to speak about myself, actually. So I could do, uh, I could do classes, I could conduct classes, I could organize, I could teach. All these things were not an issue for me. But just to speak about myself that, you know, I'm like this, I can teach and uh, you should come for my class. This is what the program is. 
so the marketing aspects right so that is where uh, i was most uh, apprehensive about because uh, i was you know i have been trained right from the beginning to keep a low profile where uh, the idea is that someone uh, someone is there who is much bigger and who is offering this and you just seeing how you can be a part of this you just a limb of this and uh, just realize that you don't know anything here so i've never you i've never been used to even speaking about myself and uh, that i'm doing this i can do this i can do that and uh, i just realized uh, that this is something uh, which would be very difficult for me because uh, when i'm teaching let's say if i'm volunteering and i'm uh, teaching a program for the foundation i don't have to be concerned much about who is attending my program you know because the foundation takes care of all the aspects of getting people to the program so i just have to go out and teach but now if i'm starting on my own after finishing the yoga teachers training i also have to get involved in this aspect of you know uh, designing posters making a website or getting people to be interested and to come to your programs when there are so many people around uh, them from whom they can learn why they should come to your program and so many other things so this is what i was most uncomfortable with because i have not been used to speaking <laughs> much about myself so uh, i was faced i was uh, facing this dilemma of uh, how to break this at one point you know i was like we always have to uh, you know see uh, whatever is needed you know if it's needed to uh, do something we have to just do it and on the other hand it was like breaking these years of uh, conditioning which uh, i have never been used to even posting much on social media i just created a profile uh, you know because people said that you have to be on social media otherwise i was never on uh, never active on social media i didn't even have a smartphone actually <laughs> so uh, this this necessitated all these changes and then um, it took me some time to come to terms with it and then i realized that uh, if i don't change if i don't drop this limitation i'll only be left teaching myself so it is time to gear up and uh, change because this is how uh, this is the need of the hour and this is what is needed this is what people are looking at most of the time they're spending in social media or online so if you're not over there you're missing out on reaching people so when i just approached it in that way i just saw that um, and this is something which needs to be done and uh, you need to break this limitation and slowly i started taking taking steps towards it it was like you know taking baby steps towards it in the first year i remember uh, for the first time in my life i started posting uh, in social media about myself of me taking classes of posting uh, pictures about the classes which i had never done before you know it uh, it was something which was very difficult for me to do where uh, i was you know posting about myself but then i said uh, i used to think 10 times before posting a post if it's okay if it's appropriate whether it's relevant for people or not when i said uh, it's okay just go ahead and do it so in the first few months um, it just started with posting pictures i didn't speak much then uh, in the second stage uh, started writing a few things as well along with the post maybe my experience or experience of other participants how did i feel then uh, people started saying that you write quite well <laughs> which uh, which i never knew so you know i never thought so so i thought you know okay let me start writing also so after that i started writing more blogs about different aspects uh, of my experience of the program so uh, this is how it started i think Uh, in year 2 i was writing a lot of blogs about different aspects of my programs and how was my experience about my uh, visit to the ashram about silence and so many other aspects what was sadhanas i did so i started writing so it happened uh, so and uh, i remember that even then many uh, even then i was very hesitant to come on video i waited for a long time and uh, many people said that you come on video you do a live session you can uh, you know you can engage with people more over video but i said i think i'm good with this <laughs> this itself is took a long time to break so uh, finally someone plotted and 
they sent someone to bangalore to take my interview without my <laughs> permission and uh, i just said okay since you have any day come i have to give an interview and uh, that was my first interview i think uh, i think almost 2 and 1/2 3 years back so with that i uh, kind of uh, broke the ice and i started uh, doing more video sessions then after that i said that okay now it's the time to you know <laughs> intensify the video uh, video uh, appearances so i recorded a whole series called as agni series so thanks to vaishak who was uh, who was the one who came to bangalore and <laughs> who possibly took my interview and after that uh, you know he was uh, kind enough to uh, support in recording the series so i recorded the whole agni series and since then um, started doing a lot more video sessions live sessions q and a sessions and so many other things so finally that also broke you know <laughs> of not appearing on video so it's been a whole cycle last 5 years and uh, i can just look at it and see that how uh, slowly every time i have always seen that what is it that something i need to break or work towards and i slowly work towards it and in, in the initial stages i remember that i was kind of running across bangalore you know <laughs> different parts of bangalore where uh, i remember in the first year uh, i was uh, i was teaching almost almost 15 20 classes a month you know wherever there was an opportunity but it was uh, different areas in bangalore jayanagar jp nagar vijayanagar indra nagar hsr layout i was just going across bangalore i didn't have any studio i did try to uh, form a studio in bangalore but the rent was uh, beyond something which i could afford i couldn't afford it and i said that i didn't want to take the pressure of uh, you know every month to generate so much revenue to uh, to pay the rent so i said i'll just go with a rent uh, a temporary rental basis model where we just rent out places and for a few days do the program and wind up so i opted for that model because that is what i was uh, you know uh, i had the resources for so i was uh, carrying all my material in the first few months it was all borrowing you know i didn't even have a laptop i borrowed everything whether it's a laptop or the photograph or the lamp <laughs> everything uh, i was just borrowing then after a few months i decided okay i let me uh, get my own stuff so i uh, got all the stuff and then i was across i was going across different parts in bangalore and teaching so this continued for almost two two and a half years where uh, i was teaching across bangalore in different regions and the only uh, focus was to teach as much as i can i never focused on anything or anything else in fact i didn't even have a name for the organization neither a website nor a name it uh, it is only some participants i remember one of my participants he was kind of after me that you know i like you should make a website it will bring you more people i'll make a website for you finally i relented i said okay you make it and almost after 2 years uh, uh, of our operations he made a website and uh, still you know <laughs> almost the same <laughs> and uh, even the name actually Uh, we didn't even have a name for the first one and a half years then we were kind of forced to make a name so we formed a name you know hope you like it <laughs> so uh, this is how our journey started and uh, and i remember that we were just focusing on offline classes at that time there were no online classes until uh, you know the virus ar arrived <laughs> last year and uh, not last year last to last year and uh, changed things completely so that is when our models also changed changed and we were left uh, wondering what to do because all our programs are only uh, something which can be taught in person or offline and all of a sudden we were faced with this uh, situation where we couldn't do uh, anything else but to just evolve and make changes so uh, that is the time when i uh, thought about what can be done online and instead of fighting and crying over uh, the situation that this is how it is i said that uh, let us use this opportunity to create something online because everybody is online and uh, they are waiting to uh, see how to learn so uh, last to last year was a time when um, 
things changed for us uh, where uh, suddenly we were able to reach people from across the world before that we were just focusing on bangalore in different parts of the um, state and uh, different parts of the city but uh, since uh, last to last year once the pandemic happened that was when we were forced to reconsider and that also uh, was one of the most uh, challenging periods during my uh, during my life i would say because so many things happened during that time but it uh, it definitely helped in bringing out the best of me because uh, we spent that time to try and create new offerings so we came up with srishti online program and uh, till then we had we were only doing srishti program offline i was doing it in a residential format so actually there's a story to that as well <laughs> i remember that uh, when i was doing these offline programs i used to do many day programs for children and for adults but i always had this in mind that i should do a residential program for children but i could never get the courage to do that because uh, just the thought of that was too overwhelming for me to even think about it you know because there's so much which is involved in a residential program the responsibility the kind of uh, responsibility which you have let's say to take care of 20 children who are left uh, who their parents have left to your hands for those 3 to 3 to 5 days so just the thought of that was enough to send shivers down my spine and i thought <laughs> that it's better i don't venture into it and uh, that is this is also something which was there in my mind but i didn't uh, work on it finally in um, 2017 december that is when i decided that uh, let me take the first step towards it i know it may be difficult but let's give it a try so that was the time when i first launched that program i said uh, i don't know how it will go but at least let me give it an attempt because I, because i shouldn't regret that i wanted to do something i didn't try it out so the first program we launched and uh, we got a phenomenal response about 25 people registered we didn't even have a website nothing just this poster we made and uh, Uh, with that the, with that itself we had about 25 children and uh, that was enough experience for me to realize that this is something uh, which i need to continue so after that we started doing these residential programs for children and for adults every uh, every every vacation we were planning to do that so that was something unique which we uh, created so when i look back and i see in the last 5 years it has uh, it has been uh, just constantly trying to innovate and trying to create new offerings and uh, this is not something uh, which is coming uh, from you know just fancy it is something which i'm just seeing which is needed for people or which i need and when i just see that, that this is something which is needed and i need to create something to cater to that demand then it uh, happens to be like a program so uh, the srishti program was a uh, was an outcome of that and uh, when this um, when the pandemic struck then that is when i decided that let me try to do it online let me see how this can be done online so i started this online again i was very apprehensive whether it will work online whether you know the same uh, things which happen in an offline program it can be replicated online whether the impact will be felt all these question marks were there but i said it's better to get started and this has always been uh, the way we work uh we never overthink too much whether it'll work or not we just jump into it if it works it works if it doesn't work it's fine we'll continue with something else so i just jumped into it and uh, in the first program itself we had more than 100 children participating from different parts of the world so uh, that was proof enough that something like this could work the responses which we got the feedback which we got from different children and their parents you know they that gave us the confidence that this is definitely something which can work and then i started thinking of doing more things online and uh, then um, i remember uh, i was just thinking of what else to do online because there's very limited which we things which we can offer so it needs a lot of innovation and uh, creativity to come up with something which is uh, catering to all those things which you can teach but at the same time something unique so i was just thinking about that then i thought about you know some weird idea came you know <laughs> that i should start a program at brahma murtam at 3:30 in the morning which <laughs> never ever in my life have ever attended a program at brahma murtam forget about even doing a program so uh, i just thought that this would be one of the craziest things i ever thought about and uh, anyway anyway no one will come 
but then i don't know something within me was saying that uh, it doesn't matter even if it looks like a crazy idea you still go ahead and <laughs> try it out so i just thought that let me try and see anyway i thought that no one will come but let's see <laughs> because i thought if none if nothing else for myself it would work because i needed some inspiration <laughs> to get up <laughs> and maybe it'll serve the purpose for me you know so i just launched this program and again uh, to my surprise i didn't know that uh, there were so many people who were looking uh, who were even crazy enough than me <laughs> to think of coming at a program at 3:30 in the morning so in our first program itself we had about 150 people from across the world join and uh, attend the program at 3:30 am ist which was just unbelievable you know for me to think that someone will get up and come at 3:30 <laughs> and that took 21 days so uh, it's been uh, it's been definitely some grace which is working and uh, when i just think about it i see that uh, this cannot happen you know if uh, if you think that you are doing something this can only happen when uh, you just put in the effort and allow things to flow and that has been something uh, which we've been observing from the last 5 years and though you know i changed and started posting about myself in terms of our programs and everything in spite of that uh, you never forgot in the fundamental that it is not me who is doing the program that it is not me who is transforming people and it is not because of me that things are happening that uh, the protagonist is someone else and <laughs> i am just being a tool to offer this so that's something i have not forgotten and that fundamental i've always kept intact because the moment you think that you know you are making things happen you are doing things you have the power to change people you tend to get drifted away and um, as a seeker that is something which uh, i don't want to happen i never wanted that to happen because at the end of the day the reason why i started this is not because i want to set up an enterprise or i want to spread across the world or you know make a big enterprise the idea is just this that how i can do something which is worthwhile for myself and also for a lot of people around me because anyway all of us have limited time and energy so isn't it better to put it to the best use something which is useful for you and something which is also useful for people around you because all the time uh, we are we are engaged in some activity so why not to do some activity which is not just useful for you but even useful for people around you so it was this reason why it was only because of this reason that i even thought about taking up the teachers training and even attempting to break all these limitations which i had which was which was kind of stopping me from progressing and that fundamental i have not forgotten and i hope i, I never forget as well because uh, this is something where sadguru's grace has been uh, flowing so so much that you know i'm just i just can't imagine that 5 years have passed and we have come uh, a long way from the time we started where uh, now we have people from different parts of the world joining our programs we are able to come up with different kinds of programs catering to different people even now i was just thinking uh, if i just spend the, the next two weeks which i have in jan if i don't get uh, caught up with any other activity i have uh, at least two or three ideas to design a few new programs which have been there on my list but i have not been able to spend that time dedicated time to design it and to launch it if i am able to take off that time then uh, very soon you'll be uh, hearing about some more new programs which i want to launch which i hope it will definitely be useful because i feel there's a need for them so even now i constantly try to see what is the need and what people are asking for and if i can uh, cater to that by coming up with new programs or offerings so this is something uh, we hope we'll never change as well because uh, innovation is something uh, is not about something which we need to do just for the sake of it it is because things are always ev evolving you know and uh, if we have to stay relevant we always have to change and we have to evolve and see what is needed for people because uh, whatever we are doing is anyway for them it's not for us so you have, we just have to constantly listen so uh, i just hope that i am able to spend some time because uh, i definitely feel if i spend some time i'm it because making something new definitely requires a little uh, time 
where you're able to sit and uh, design and create certain uh, things. It's not something which can happen now uh, unless you give it dedicated time. So all these programs which you have come up with, it requires a lot of effort in coming up with something like this. Even to come up with a carousal, you may have come across many carousals which we have posted on social media. You may have come across our Ekadashi carousal or the uh, Janmashtami or the Margali or the Brahma Murtam. It may look like some few posters for you that it has it is having so much information in a few slides. But just to put together that as well, it takes a lot of effort. I, uh, I just remember that just to make any of those carousals, it must have taken at least two, three days of sustained effort, trying to read up things, trying to see which is the most important, bringing out the most important points, then uh, putting it in different forms in slides, then seeing which image can go with it. So there's a lot of work involved. So that's even to make a slider, you know, there's so much work involved. So to make a program happen, there's much, much more work involved. And uh, fortunately, we have had the fortune of so many people who are supporting us with their valuable feedback because of which we are constantly able to fine tune our offerings and see what is uh, more relevant for people. And uh, from the last five years, there's, there, there has never been a time where uh, I felt that I don't have much to do. I've always been in a position where I always have more than what I can handle. Unfortunately, in the last two years, I have to say more no's than yes, actually, because I have uh, not been able to, uh, you know, take up everything which has come to us. So many requests for private classes or, or other programs. So many things which have come up, I'm not able to do because um, I just see whatever I can do in my in the limited time which I have. Keeping my sadhana also as a priority and uh, spending enough time for that. So even now, I keep my schedule in such a way that... Um, Every few months, every three months, I've kept it like this, that I try to go into silence for at least five to seven days. Then after that, I'm traveling or doing something else. And then I come back to teaching classes. So it's never been like continuous classes. So um, I was uh, fortunate to go into Samyama Sadhana, which is a silence program last month. And, um, uh, you know, then after that, I was traveling. I was in Humpy for a few days. I had travel plans next month as well to go to the ashram. But if the pandemic is willing, you know. <laughs> so uh, we had some programs planned in this month in Bangalore, offline programs, but we had to kind of postpone it because of the pandemic. So hopefully when the situation changes, uh, we'll try to launch that as well. Uh, but I just thought that, you know, uh, I should thank all of you from the bottom of my heart for whatever you have uh, done from the last few years, your support, your messages, so I'm sorry, I'm not able to respond to everything which we get. And uh, that is something which I still need to work at, my improving my efficiency. But at the same time, uh, I, I can understand your emotion and the kind of time which you're giving and uh, the overwhelming uh, support. This is something which I've never forgotten and uh, which I'll never forget as well. So it is only because of uh, people's support their encouragement that uh, we have been able to do whatever we have been able to do in fact even now most of our work is uh, supported by volunteers whether it's social media whether it's our whatsapp groups so we have so many whatsapp groups where people are benefiting from uh, getting different daily yogic updates so this is also something volunteers have done whether it's a poster design whether it's our videos whether it's a social media so many things most of these things are done by people who are, uh, you know, touched by what we are offering. So many of our participants who have gone through our programs, they have come back and said, we'll design your website, we'll take care of the social media, we'll make videos, we'll make posters. So almost everything has come out like that, you know, we've not gone actively trying to find someone. It's been like that so far. There has been an overwhelming uh, uh, support from people across. I still remember in many places, you know, I was used to wonder that, how will I set up on my own? Because I didn't have any support, no volunteers. But I said, okay, it doesn't matter. I'll just go ahead. And then somehow or the other, some volunteer comes and, you know, they get involved. They said, we'll help in the class setup. Or someone says, you can come and stay in our home. We'll help you instead of traveling, you know. So far, you can come and stay in our homes. And uh, since last two years, since we have been doing online programs, we have got requests from different parts of the world. 
where a lot of meditators have requested that you are welcome to come to our city. We'll host you and we'll even help organize programs. So it's been really overwhelming, the support. And uh, I do hope that uh, we are able to do programs outside India as well. It's just that uh, there's not much travel which has happened in the last two years because of the pandemic. So if things open up, we'll definitely want to do. There are a lot of requests which have come from Europe and US and many other countries where they have said that they'll organize everything if we can come. They'll uh, see how we can organize everything for our programs, right from stay and everything else. So it's been really overwhelming. And uh, we just hope that uh, as things get better, we'll be able to do this. Uh, I've never uh, never imagined that uh, we'll be in a situation where we'll have more things to, uh, well, there'll be much more to handle than I could possibly do. But this has been the situation in the last five years. That's always, even now I have <laughs> 10 things pending, which I don't know when that will happen. It's always been like that. And uh, initially I used to get uh, worried about this, that how will I finish everything? But how much ever I try, I'm never able to finish everything which is there on the list. So now I'm uh, kind of getting used to that and then thinking that, okay, at least whatever you can do, you do that to the best of your ability. And uh, we'll see as how things progress. So uh, that's how it's been last five years, constantly seeing how to grow and using this as a tool. And uh, I have done various kind of roles uh, from volunteering, from working in a corporate. I started as an IT engineer, software engineer. So various kinds of roles, but nowhere I could uh, see that this kind of, uh, the kind of feeling which you get when you're doing something which is touching people's life, lives, this is something which is uh, unmatchable. I think all of us should experience this in some form or the other. It's, it's not even necessary for us to even become a teacher, you know. There are so many ways in which you can contribute. You can even you can even teach Isha Kriya or nowadays, just in a few hours of training, you can be trained, you know, to offer Rupa Yoga or other yogic tools to people. So it's not it's not that everybody has to become a teacher or anything like that. Even in very in, in a small way as well, in a, whatever capacity you can, you can take up something like this. And you can have the privilege of offering something which is much, much bigger than you, which is something which is beyond your comprehension, beyond your capacity to understand. And uh, to have the privilege of offering this to people and seeing them transform, that is something which all of us must experience. I just hope uh, this happens to all of us. And uh, we use this uh, Makar Sankranti, this time to make a fresh start in our spiritual process and uh, to see how we can grow.